The normal compensation rules for UK trains don't apply to Eurostar or Eurotunnel. So if you've been travelling on Eurostar or on the shuttle, what are your rights when you're delayed and how much compensation could you be owed? In this video, I'll reveal your key rights as a passenger, how much you can claim if delayed and why you have more rights on Eurostar than on Eurotunnel. I'm Daniel Barnett, a barrister practising in central London, and I'm the presenter of the Legal Hour on LBC Radio. This is one of a series of videos I've recorded on your rights when travelling. Here's one on your rights to compensation when there are delays on normal UK national rail trains. To stay up to date with these and all my other legal explainers, please do subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. Thank you. Although Eurostar and Eurotunnel the Shuttle use the same track and the same tunnel, the rights you have when you travel with Eurostar and Eurotunnel the Shuttle are not the same. This is because of a piece of EU legislation called the Rail Passengers Regulation, which applies to Eurostar travellers but doesn't apply to Eurotunnel services because it's impossible to travel on Eurotunnel without a vehicle of one's own, meaning travellers aren't considered to be passengers. This has important consequences if you're delayed. When you're arranging travel insurance, it's worth bearing in mind that the assistance Eurotunnel is obliged to offer if your service is delayed or cancelled is much more limited than that provided by Eurostar. Let's start by looking at Eurostar. If your Eurostar train is delayed by 60 minutes or more, you can choose to take the train or not to take the train. If you choose to continue with the journey, you're entitled to a partial refund, which you can receive either as a cash refund or a Eurostar voucher. If you continue with the journey and your train is delayed by between one hour and one hour 59 minutes, you get a 25% refund. If the delay is by between two hours and two hours 59 minutes, it's a 50% refund. And if it's three hours or more, if the delay is three hours or more, the refund is either 50% if you claim cash or 75% of the original ticket cost if you choose to receive a voucher for a future journey. You need to claim within two months. The vouchers are valid for 12 months from the date of the delayed train. You've got two months from the date your train was due to depart to apply for a refund or rebook. If your train is cancelled or announced as delayed by one hour or more and you choose not to continue with the journey, so you don't get on the train, you're entitled to cancel the ticket and claim a refund, either cash or a voucher, or rebook any available train in the same travel class, even if the new ticket would be more expensive. Eurostar will also consider reimbursing expenses that are a direct result of cancelled or delayed trains, such as food, overnight accommodation, and other transport, if this isn't covered by your travel insurance. A claim for these costs is more likely to succeed if you can show Eurostar hasn't used reasonable care and skill in providing its services as required by Section 49 of the Consumer Rights Act 2015. Article 18 2B of the Rail Passengers Regulation requires rail companies to provide hotel accommodation plus transport to and from it where this is necessary. That means if you can show you had no choice but to stay overnight, they should pay up. Only expenses that are reasonably foreseeable by the train company are likely to be reimbursed. The amount of expenses must also be reasonable, which is worth considering if you're faced with a choice between different hotels. If your train has been delayed by more than an hour, Article 18.2 of the Rail Passengers Regulation also obliges Eurostar to offer you meals and refreshments in reasonable relation to the working time, provided they're available on the train or in the station, or can be reasonably provided. Unfortunately, because the Rail Passengers Regulation doesn't apply if you're travelling in a car, your rights when you travel on Eurotunnel Le Shuttle are much more limited. These rights depend on Eurostar's conditions of carriage, which I've linked to below. Where you're delayed, Clause 3.3 of their conditions of carriage indicate they'll only provide you with assistance where, in their opinion, a delay or cancellation means that transport is not 
possible within a reasonable time. If they do consider you can't be transported within a reasonable time, they can choose whether to arrange for alternative transport from Dover to Calais, or vice versa, with another operator, cancel the ticket and refund your fare, or allow you the choice of the refund or rebooking at the same price. They're not obliged to give you the choice as to which of those three you take. Unlike with Eurostar and unlike with UK and EU passenger services, you cannot claim a proportion of the ticket by way of compensation for delay. Clause 9.2 also exempts the company from liability for any loss you suffer as a result of delayed or cancelled services unless transport isn't possible within a reasonable time. This means the company is unlikely to help you with accommodation or food costs, even where you've suffered substantial delays. If you're unhappy with how Eurostar has handled your application for compensation, you can appeal to the SNCF mediator. I've provided a link in the show notes below for you. You can submit a request for mediation in either English or in French. The service is free and in most cases you'll have a result within 90 days. The mediator's decision isn't technically binding, surprisingly, but it will normally be accepted by the company. If you're unhappy with the way Eurotunnel the Shuttle have handled your application for compensation, your options are more limited. You can complain using their internal complaints procedure. Again, I've linked below. If you're still dissatisfied, it's possible to start a claim in the small claims court, but this usually involves a court fee, substantial hassle, and of course, you actually don't have that many legal rights to compensation when using Eurotunnel. I hope you found this video interesting. Here's another relating to travel, uh, and here's another one you might like. I'm Daniel Barnett. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.